Now let's say if we have a 10 kilogram block next to another 10 kilogram block. And let's say that these two blocks are separated by a distance of 10 meters. And let's say the axis of rotation is placed at the center of mass of the system. So each block is 5 meters away from the axis of rotation. What is the inertia of this system? The total inertia of the system is going to be the inertia of every point. So we got the moment of inertia for the first object, we'll call it m1. So it's m1 r1 squared plus the moment of inertia for the second object. So it's going to be 10 kilograms times r, which is 5. r is the distance between the axis of rotation and the mass of the object. And the other ones could be the same. It's 10 times 5 squared. 5 squared is 25. And 10 times 25 is 250. So 250 plus 250 is 500. So the inertia of the system when the axis of rotation is at the center of mass is 500 kilograms times square meters. Now what is the inertia of the system if we move the axis of rotation to the center of the 10 kilogram mass? So let's say if we move it five meters to the left. What is the new inertia of the system? So let's find out. So the new inertia is going to be the sum of the moment of each inertia for each object. So we could use the same equation. So m1 is still 10, however r1 is 0 because the first mass is directly at the axis of rotation. The second mass is 10 meters away from the new axis of rotation. So 10 squared is 100 and 10 times 100 is 1000. So the new inertia is 1000 kilograms times square meters. Now there's another way in which you can get this answer. And that's using the parallel axis theorem. The parallel axis theorem allows us to calculate the new inertia value if we have the original inertia where the axis of rotation passes through the center of mass using this equation. Now keep in mind this only works if the new axis is parallel to the original axis and if the original axis has to pass through the center of mass, and the system has to be symmetrical. Notice that these masses are the same. If they're different, it's not going to work. So we have the old inertia value. That's 500. M represents the mass of the whole system, which is 10 plus 10, so that's 20. And D is the displacement of the axis of rotation. So we displaced it by 5 meters. 5 squared is 25, and 25 times 20 is 500. So the new inertia value is 500 plus 500, which is 1,000 kilograms times square meters, which is the same as this answer. So now you know how to use the parallel axis theorem to calculate the new inertia of a system. Now let's try another example. So this time, we're going to have a system with four masses as opposed to two masses. So each block has a mass of four kilograms. And what I want you to do in this problem is I want you to calculate the inertia of the system first when the axis of rotation passes through the center of mass of the system. So each of these four kilogram blocks, they're equidistant from the axis of rotation. So they're all five meters away from it. 
So feel free to pause the video and calculate the total inertia of the system. So the inertia of the system as it passes through the center of mass is going to be the sum of the individual moments of inertia of each object in this system. So it's the sum of mr squared. So each block has a mass of 4 and an r value of 5 meters. They're 5 meters away from the axis of rotation. So that's for one block. So for each of the four identical blocks, to get the total inertia, let's multiply it by 4. So 5 squared is 25. 25 times 4 is 100. And 100 times 4 is 400. So the inertia is 400 kilograms times meter squares. Now let's move the axis of rotation to the left. And we're going to move it by a distance of 9 meters to the left. So what is the new inertia of the system? And use both methods to get the answer. So to calculate the new inertia, it's going to be, so this object is 4 meters away from the new center of mass. 9 minus 5 is 4. And so we have two objects that's 4 meters away from it. So it's going to be 2 times the mass of those objects. 2 times 4 gives us the total mass of the two objects. And they're each 4 meters away from the axis of rotation. Now these two masses, they're 14 meters away. 5 plus 5 plus 4. Or you could simply say 5 plus 9. That's going to be 14 meters. So we have two of those masses, each with a mass of 4 kilograms. And they're 14 meters apart from the new axis of rotation. 4 squared is 16 times 4. That's 64 times 2. So this is 128. And then 14 squared times 4 times 2. That's 1568. So therefore, the new inertia of the system is 1,696 kilograms times square meters. Now let's confirm this answer using the parallel axis term. So the new inertia is equal to the old one where the axis of rotation passes through the center of mass plus md squared. So the original inertia was 400. The mass of the whole system is 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. So that's 16 kilograms. And the axis of rotation has been shifted 9 meters. And don't forget to square it. 9 squared is 81. 81 times 16 is 1296. And 1296 plus 400 is 1696. So as you can see, the answer is the same. So now you have a second example that illustrates the use of the parallel axis theorem. Now let's move on to a third example. So if we have a very thin rod where the axis of rotation passes through the center of mass, and let's say L represents the length of that rod, the inertia of this system is 1 over 12 ml squared. Now let's say if we have the same rod with the same mass and the mass is distributed evenly throughout this rod, but if we move the axis of rotation to the edge of the rod, then the inertia of the system changes. It's now 1 third ml squared. What I want you to do is I want you to prove that this equation is true using the parallel axis theorem starting from this one. So this is the inertia when the axis of rotation passes through the center of mass. And our goal is to calculate the new inertia. So it's going to be the old one plus md squared. So the old inertia is this equation. 
it's 1 over 12 ml squared plus md squared. So the new axis of rotation has been shifted this way. And since L is the length of the rod, the new axis has been shifted one half of the length of the rod. So D is going to be one half of L. So one squared is one, two squared is four. So we got one fourth ML squared. Now what we need to do is get common denominators in order to add these two fractions. So I'm going to multiply this by 3 over 3. So this is going to be 1 over 12 ml squared plus 3 over 12 ml squared. 1 over 12 plus 3 over 12 is 4 over 12 ml squared. And 12 divided by 4 is 3, so 4 over 12 is 1 over 3. So therefore, we get the same answer.